You're a big tube. You're a worm. And I'm not saying that to be insulting. I'm just saying it's like, that's where you came from. Good morning. Happy Monday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. Man, today's a recovery day like you wouldn't believe. Uh, we wrapped up uh, the Intensive 15 yesterday. Amazing group of people. Um, what a great weekend. Um, you know, no PowerPoint, no manual, all struggle. It was great. We had a great time. Um, lots of high energy the whole time. Can't thank these people enough for, for uh, coming. Um, it was a little bit different as it always is in such a good way. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I definitely need a recovery day for this one. Um, so let's dig into today's Q&A. This is with Dan. Dan's always been kind of quiet. Um, on the Coffee and Coaches Conference call. He's been on a few times and then um, asked a killer question um, when he did, did open up a little bit uh, this, this past week and asked a great question, very foundational question in regards to why everything is an ER or an IR and how do we even get rid of these, these straight planes that were so ingrained in us in school. And what we have to recognize is that all joints move on helical angles and therefore if they're all helical they're all ERs and IRs and this is the tough part to understand but once you can get rid of those straight planes a lot of solutions arise that you would have ignored previously so Dan powerful question thank you so much for your participation if you would like to participate in a 15-minute consultation please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com askbillhartman at gmail.com put 15-minute consultation in the subject line we'll arrange that at our mutual convenience um, please note, um, I'm a little bit behind on those because of the intensive um, this, this past week. So we will be playing catch up for a while on those. So just be patient. We'll get to you. Okay. Thanks everybody for being here on a Monday. We will see you tomorrow. Um, last follow-up question, just more of a model question with um, describing motions as ER and IR only. Um, I guess... Uh, <laughs> How would I better conceptualize that with like, I guess, traditional abduction or um, flexion? I kind of think about like the uh, Chinese handcuffs where it's like a tube and then, I don't know, if you widen it, it kind of expands and then if you elongate it, kind of. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. So I don't know if I'm off on that basis. But... <laughs> That's exactly how it works. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Make a big Y shape with both arms. So like a Y, so like turn your hands and all that kind of stuff. Your thumb should be pointing backwards, right? Oh, yes. There you go. Cool. What position is that? ER. Oh, it is. It's absolutely ER. But by tradition, <clears throat> the, the stuff that they taught you in school, what position is that in? Of the shoulders? Yes, sir. Some school pads. ER. Just ER? Like it, when they when they taught you in school and they said, put your arm in that position, Dan. And they said, what position is that shoulder in? And you go, well, it's this, it's this, it's this. It's three things, right? Oh, I see what, what you're saying. Um, so, so what yeah, three yeah. things is it? Oh, so we got flexion, a little bit of abduction, which we'll call scaption, whatever you want to do. No, no, so, there's no scaption. Get out of there. That's stupid. But uh so, Think so. Go to traditional school. Three planes of motion, right? Okay. Okay. The the old three planes of motion thing that don't exist, right? You understand <laughs> that? Okay. If you're if my arm is in this position, what position is it in? Like, give me all three. Uh, flexion, abduction, and ER. Okay. But it's not in any of them, right? To the maximum, is it? No. But they're all ER measures, so they're all ER, right? Because okay. I had to, I had to create an expansion to get into that position, right? Okay. Now take your right hand and put it in your left front pocket. Okay. So it's up. It, you went across and you put it in the opposite pocket, right? You can put yeah. the other arm down, dude. Okay. So we're just talking about the right arm. Right hand in your left hand pocket. What position is that arm in? Adduction, um, more relatively more extension in IR. Well, it's it, it it's it's in a relative position of extension 
internal rotation and adduction by tradition, right? Yep. All of those are IRs. So now you just did a PNF diagonal, correct? Now you understand why PNF does what it does. Okay. okay. It's just ER to IR, ER to IR, ER to IR. Okay. You get it? Yep. Thank you. All turns. See, it was all turns to get there. Did you understand that? Yes. Yeah. It's all turns. If it's then, all turns, then who cares about straight planes? Okay. There's not a joint. There's not a there, all joints. Here you go. All joints. Every single joint moves on a helical angle. All right. Okay. A helix. So if it moves on a helix, there is no straight plane. Right? Any illustrations of that? What do you mean? With visual references. A with visual the, reference. Like the, the, other than the one that you just demonstrated for everybody on this call? Yes. It's just, I don't know, conceptualizing, conceptualizing it is definitely, I don't know, for me, just a roadblock sometimes. But Okay. Hold your, hold your arm up in, in a traditionally flexed position. Like, like, okay, how did you get your hand into that space, bro? Did you move in a straight plane? No. No. So I, I'm going to exaggerate a piece of this to help you, okay? So hold your arm up there again, boss. Now, turn your palm so it faces backwards. Your thumb's going to point out to the right. Cool. Did you feel the turn? Yeah. So that's a turn. There's no straight plane. Okay. Like literally you turned, you literally turned everything in sequence to get your hand into a position in space. All right. Do you see it? Yeah. Like the true shoulder flexion test, like I can appreciate that rotation. You know, that makes sense. But yep. for some other reason, like, I don't know, other planes, I guess, are more challenging for me, but. Okay. Do you, do you understand uh, Codman's paradox? No. Okay. Stand up and move back away from your camera just a little bit so people can see you from the waist up. Okay. Your arms are resting at your side. Your thumbs are pointing forward, correct? Yes. Okay. Hold your arms straight out in front of you in 90 degrees of traditional flexion, thumbs pointing towards the ceiling. Got them? Ceiling. Yep. Those, the sky in your case. <laughs> All right. Now... From there, I want you to move your I want you to move your arms into 90 degrees of traditional abduction. Awesome. Now bring your arms straight down to your sides. Do not change the rotation. Your palms will now face forward. Did you notice that? Yep. Okay. So I didn't tell you to turn your arms, but as you move through space, there's a there's a, a round surface in the in the shoulder joint that you moved. Okay. And so we started with a, with a position where the shoulder was more turned inward. And just by moving you through space, I, I got your shoulder to turn. So as you're moving through space, regardless of where you're going, there's a turn that's taking place literally at the joint level. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's called Todman's paradox. And what this is, it, it literally has everything to do with round surfaces, like moving on a round surface. Okay. So you moved in straight lines. You actually made a big triangle that was superimposed on a sphere. That's what caused the turn to occur. Even though you ended in the same place, you had to face a different direction to get there. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. so everything is, turn as you're moving, everything has to turn to move. Okay. Okay. You're a big tube. You're a worm. And I'm not saying that to be insulting. I'm just saying it's like, that's where you came from. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir.